Okay, joined by Houston head coach Todd Whitting, and we'll have a couple of student athletes uh, to follow. But coach, first of all, uh, congratulations on advancing. Uh, we can take an opening statement for you on the game, and then we'll open up to questions, please. Well, I'm just proud of them. They don't they don't quit, and I've said this. I'll say it over and over again. It's one of my favorite teams that I've ever had, and I don't know how it's going to work out for us if we're not in the NCAA postseason. If we don't, I know one thing: they give me everything they got every single game since we started back in the fall with practice workouts and so on and so forth. So they're never out of it. They never quit. And that's how you win championships. And hopefully that's, that's what the future holds for us. Okay, we'll take questions, please. Use the raise hand feature in the Zoom to get in the queue. We'll start with James Miller, please. Yeah, Todd, just once again, yesterday you emphasized, you know, just what Santi has meant to this team, even though, you know, he hasn't gotten a ton of playing time. And for him to, you know, be up in that situation again and to come through, just can you take me through those emotions and just, especially with a guy like that, you know, fifth year, well, you're, you're talking about an older player, um, a veteran guy who's, who's had a lot of college at bats. And, you know, his first two ABs of the game weren't very good. He and I had a talk that, you know, it's real simple with him. You know, he, when he gets over the ball and, and, and tries to go in that right center gap, he's pretty effective. So you saw him make the adjustment mid game. So there was, you know, I, there was, I was really confident when they walked to Lamero that he was going to get that done for us. Go next to Mark Berman, please. Todd, what's that like when you win a game like that in this situation, a tournament in the bottom well, of the night? They're always fun, um, but when you do it in championship play, you know, it makes it even sweeter. And that was huge for us because it gets us the day off, lets our pitching staff rest a little bit. You know, Central Florida, Memphis got to fight it out and burn up a bunch of arms. So, but it's exciting. You know, I'm I'm just happy for the players. You know, I, I want that one to work out for them. And Cougs should be playing on the weekend in this tournament, and uh, we are for sure. Okay, we'll go next to Joseph Duarte, please. Todd, your uh, your table setters got on at the top of the lineup, and then I think one through five had 15 of your 19 hits. Uh, you know, when you get that type of production, is that, is that kind of show what this offense is capable of when you get guys on base and, and you got guys that can drive them in? Yeah, it is. I mean, there's there's confidence all up and down the lineup. You know, we really mm -hmm. outside of a, a, a few short stretches, we've been pretty consistent with the bat. I don't see that we really have any superstars in there. We don't really have any guys that are that are dragging us down. It's very, very balanced. That makes it tough on opposing pitches stats. When when you can have some balance, we got balance and power, balance of speed. So, you know, when those guys get clicking, they're pretty fun to watch. Use in particular, just to, to see him in that leadoff spot, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that first pitch homer, and, and then just kind of just the, the consistency there. And then to have Alex hitting the way he's hitting. Those two in particular, I mean, has, has it, have you felt like, you know, they sort of maybe the last, you know, few weeks have, have kind of raised it up a notch? Well, you say that you're talking about two guys at the top of the lineup that, you know, if you ask them, probably hadn't put swing the bat really that well the last couple of weeks. But, you know, the past never equals the future. Those guys just grind and work. I love having a guy like Oost at the top, kind of like with Wong and Trio the last couple, you know, a few years that we've had where they have a chance to run the ball in the ballpark. And, you know, having a loaf right there where he hits has been, has been awesome for us all year. So, the, you know, those guys, it, you know, whether they get it done or the other ones get it done, you know, we, we've been like that with our offense all season where, you know, somebody steps up and gets hot for us, gets hot and gets a big hit. Back to James, please. Yeah, Todd, uh, you talked about this last night again, just uh, Torrey Alba and just another, another situation like this, and he does the job again. Is he just pitching at, you know, an all-time high in confidence? When you care and you're passionate, then the success is going to happen for you. I truly believe that. And that's that's all that's going on with Jose right now, and that's all that's going on with Santi. You know, Santi is a similar story, like I told you guys last night about Jose. When, when Santi wasn't playing, maybe wasn't even on a roster, he never, he never got down. He never pouted. He never felt sorry for himself. He never blamed anybody else. He just kept working and went almost two months without a, without an at bat. And you know those those guys both they're selfless, selfless players. Um, and I appreciate both of them because that's they are a huge part of what we're doing right now. Back to Mark for the next one, please. Uh, Todd, I know it can be a bit of a cliche, but the way you off one, can there be some carryover momentum into Saturday? I mean, I think so, but you know how baseball is. And the past never equals the future, positive or negative. So all I know is we're going to go back, get some rest tonight. We'll have an off day tomorrow with a short workout. Um, and we'll come out here and give everything we have on Saturday. One more from Joseph, please. Todd, uh, you know, we asked you this the other night about, you know, you may not have been playing your best ball entering, but to get hot at this stretch uh, and win those first two, you feel like uh, – now you, I mean, you you have some some room that you can do things with the lineup, or maybe I mean, does that? I don't want to say take some of the pressure off, but getting to getting to Saturday, uh, how how does that help you in terms of how you, you look at this uh, 
roster and how you might do things and maybe just from the mental standpoint from the guys and how they deal with it. Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, with as beat up as we are on the offensive side of the ball, and we really have been all year long, there's not a whole lot of options there. And it, it really, all, all up and down the line, they're all swinging the bat pretty well. So, you know, the main thing is we got to get, we got to get rest in our staff. We got to, um, you know, continue to, you know, we're going to keep going just like we did today. We'll throw the entire pitching staff we have to. There's not a, there is no roles. There's no starter. There's no middle guy. There's no closer. Um, whoever, the, whoever we feel like can help us get out of that inning at that time or piece together a couple of innings, that's what we're going to do all the way through it. Chuck, if I could ask one more, Chuck, you guys, Todd, today wore a uh, sticker on your helmet right. in honor of, of the, the people in Uvalde. Uh, yeah. Can you just, you know, tell us about, about the decision to kind of do that and, and, and sort of, you know, your thoughts on, 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 you know, just being here, being in Florida, but everything all that's going back home here in Texas? Yeah, it puts baseball in perspective, that's true for sure. But, I mean, I got to thank Tracy Colley on that, or my uh, director of ops. She's the one that, that made that happen, um, you know, brought the idea to me. So, I mean, appreciate her doing that. But, obviously, we're thinking about everybody back in our home state. And it, uh, it really puts things – it makes the baseball game not really seem that important. But uh, you know, our thoughts with everybody back home. Thanks, Todd. Coach Whitting, thanks for giving us a few minutes today. Enjoy the off day. Yep, thanks. All right. Okay, up next we're going to have uh, Brandon Yusei. All right, we'll take questions for, for Brandon. We'll start with Joseph, please. Brandon, what's it, uh, what's it like to, uh, to be in that situation in, in the bottom of the night, bases loaded, see uh, Santiago come through like that, and, and you guys pull out a, another late inning uh, win to, to keep this thing rolling? It's awesome. It's, it's one of the best feelings in the world, especially with Santi being you know, a veteran. I knew he was going to get it done. Whether it was a sack fly, base hit, walk off home run, I knew it was going to get it done. And in that moment right there, it's just you, everything goes away and you just, your adrenaline's flowing and it, it's a great feeling. Uh, go next to James Muller, please. Yeah, Brandon, first off, can you just take me through that uh, first AB, you know, with what you saw there and to get off to a hot start? And then also just how important the top of the lineup was today, you know, especially you, Alex, uh, and Tulamero just, you know, getting on base and, you know, producing runs early. Yeah, well, the first at-bat of the game, Coach Whitting always tells me, he says, uh, like, if I can leave the yard, do it. So, I mean, I just went up there and wanted to put my, my best swing on it, short punch, and I happened to end up leaving the yard. And as well as Lopez behind me, he had a four-hit day today. So, he, I mean, he did. He had a phenomenal day, and it kind of got overlooked because of the walk-off. But our whole team knows that, you know, he was a really big part of our win today. Any others, for Joseph or James? Yeah, yeah Brandon, uh, he's probably there next to you, but I was wondering if you could tell us, you know, about Santiago. Just, I mean, what's he like, you know, in terms of, you know, he's a, he's a veteran presence, but just to have a guy who, you know, is, as, as Coach Whitting said, he's kind of had his ups and downs this season, but he's always hung in there. And, you know, whenever his number's been called, you know, he goes and tries to get the job done. I mean, myself, along with, I can guarantee you just about the whole entire team could say Santi's one of the, you know, best, best teammates on the team. He's always, a, he shows up the same guy every day, whether, you know, he might not be traveling or he's hitting in the four hole. He's the same guy every day. He's easily one of our best teammates. He has all of our backs, you know, having him on the team is awesome. He brings leadership. He helps out the freshmen. Having him on the team is just, it's, it is a blessing. He's the best teammate anybody could ask for. Brandon, Coach Whitting has talked about the fight this team has shown. And it, I mean, last year y'all were in close games, but y'all weren't able to pull them out. This year, I think this is like number 21 or 22 wins come from behind. What's different? What what about this fight that this year team shows has just uh, sort of resonated? I think a lot of it comes from the guys who were here last year, including myself, that we didn't want to go through the same thing that we went through last year. And bringing in, you know, a lot of fresh blood, new guys coming in and leading those freshmen to where, you know, just never being out of it. And Coach Kivett always tells us, you know, that we're never out of it. We're never out of it. So Coach Kiv is a, a huge reason behind that fight because he's, man, he he can light that fire just with a couple of words and he gets our offense rolling. So anything more for Brandon? All right. Thanks, Brandon. Thank you. And we'll bring in Santiago Garcia as well here. And uh, Joseph, feel free to get started. 
Well, Santiago, are you going to apply for Florida residency the way you're uh, you're hitting the ball this week? Uh, maybe when I'm older, but uh, I like Houston right now, so I think I'll stay in that area. <laughs> in all seriousness, to to have the four hits the other night and then crunch time, bases loaded. I heard the post game interview where you talked about wiffle ball when you were younger and bases loaded. I mean, you kind of set up for us that that moment there, going to the plate and 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 getting the pitch that you want. Well, it's actually funny, uh, Ian, when I was in the hole getting ready to hit, you know, he, he told me, he's like, listen, this game's going to come down to you. Like, they, you're going to end up being the guy that wins it and walks it off. So I have to give Ian the credit for kind of seeing the future there. But in that moment, it's just, you know, like I said, it's just going back to being a little kid. Uh, like I said, you know, this is my fifth year, my last year of eligibility. So, you know, getting in situations like that, it's fun. You know, it's, it's really just kind of taking the deep breath, enjoying the moment, you know, trying to put a good swing on the ball and whatever happens, happens. But the biggest thing is just enjoying the moment, not making it bigger than what it is, you know, just, and just having fun with it. James, anything from you? Yeah, Santi, uh, you know, entering this weekend, you might've been a guy that, you know, guys wouldn't think you, you'd get a sh penciled in in the lineup, but you've done, well, to be able to do what you've done, can you just talk about the confidence um, your teammates and Coach Whitting has shown in you and even, just a minute ago, Coach Whitting was like, you were the exact guy he wanted at the plate in that type of situation. Well, I mean, to hear that, you know, it, it's obviously, you know, that's a big blessing to be in those situations, but also to know that my guys have my back and, that, you know, the coaches believe in me. It's it's an awesome feeling, but I got to give credit to, you know, the guys that hit in front of me. You know, Oos does a, man, does a great job. It's fun watching him hit Lopez the same way. Like you said, he's got a four hit day. And then Thule, that guy just hits, you know, we call him Tony Barrels. It's almost like he never misses one. And then to have a guy like Herney that hits behind me, you know, to have that kind of protection, it allows me to, you know, when I get in those situations, you know, kind of take a deep breath and, you know, understand that even if I don't necessarily get it done, I have guys behind me that that'll get it done. So I have complete confidence in my teammates, just like I know they have in me. Any other questions? Santiago, uh, this, you know, your first year at Houston last year in college, I was wondering just from being in the SWAC and, and you were part of a, a you know, conference, you know, winner over there. Uh, what, what, what it's been like for you to kind of make the transition to, and, and how you, you know, for those of us who haven't had a chance to talk to you this year, just the, the, the opportunity as a grad student to come over uh, from Alabama state, what, what sort of was in your process to, to pick Houston and, and, and sort of, you know, what, what that, what that whole situation was for you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, first I want to say, you know, I'm, I'm very thankful and, you know, uh, blessed for the coaching staff and the opportunity I had at Alabama State. They were nothing but, you know, gracious and grateful. But what ended up uh, leading to my decision to come to Houston is just, you know, they were uh, one of the first ones to recruit me when I got in the portal and they were kind of on me hard. And it was just every time I talked to them, it felt like, you know, a place I wanted to be. It was a place I was hungry to win, uh, something that, you know, I love to do. It's fun winning. So it was a place I was hungry, hungry to win again. And I wanted to be kind of a part of a, a program that kind of got a program like Houston back to the standard that they are. And, uh, you know, so I just, that's something I really wanted to be a part of. And it's something I'm very blessed and grateful for. Was this the COVID year? I mean, you got that extra year. Is that what yes, made sir. this possible? Yes, sir. Okay. Thanks. Anything more? Santiago, thank you. Appreciate thank you. Hey, Never mind. I'm joined now by Memphis head coach Darren Schoenrock. Uh, coach, um, just get your thoughts on the game, please. We'll take some yeah, great, co great college baseball game. I mean, it was uh, it's basically two two offensive teams that that never say never, and and uh, that's kind of how we played all year, and that's how they played all year, and it just came down to. You know, I think I think late in the game they did a little better job getting a leadoff man on, making us play under pressure from the mound, but. Can't fault our guys, you know, being down like we were to come back and take a lead. We, we've done that several times this year, and that's kind of how we're built. Take questions. Joseph Duarte, please. Coach, uh, just looking at the top of their order, uh, the first three or four guys, the number of hits they had. Did, uh, in your regular season, did you, did you – was that something and a point of emphasis on, on what they could do, uh, you know, up top in the order? Well, they're they're you know they're really built pretty balanced. Uh, the top of their guy, the top of the order had a, had great days today. Uh, you know, and Sham, we weren't we weren't really sh certain what we we're going to get with with Shambo. Uh, decided to run him out there. He he you know he was lights out his first 
first two starts of the year, and then he went down with an injury, missed about nine weeks, and uh, we've slowly brought you know brought him back, and he's been uh, a, an inning or two here and there. They ambushed him in you know in the first, and uh, kind of put us back on our heels a little bit, but there wasn't any panic in our dugout, you know, because of what you know how we're built offensively, which is kind of similar to them that we can. We can bunch some things and we can ambush some people too. And, and, uh, and we did that, but the, you know, credit them. They, we had, they got a number of leadoff men on today and made us play from, you know, play from a, a little bit more pressure on the defensive side. And looking at your, your bullpen after, after, um, after Shamblin, uh, they came in to look like they did a really nice job there. Uh, you know, uh, keeping, keeping things in, you know, and check where you guys could come back. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we're, uh, uh, Kendrick's been, uh, Dalton's kind of been one of our close type guys early in the year, and then he's gone through some struggles. And Wimberley's been a little bit of the hotter guy lately, so we elected to go in that order. Uh, Gilmore's, uh, you know, just a grad transfer, nothing flashy, uh, just kind of keeps hitters off balance a little bit. When, when uh, the, you know, the problem with those, uh, when, when they're up a little bit, they're a little bit susceptible to barrels, and that's what happened today. Uh, we had to had the leadoff hitter in the ninth there down 0-2, and then you know, left the ball up, uh, but man, I can't fault those guys, you know, pitched their guts, pitched their guts out and, and uh, gave us a chance and, and it didn't come out our way today. Thank you, Coach. Any other questions for Coach? All right, Coach Honrock, thanks so much. Yep. See you. Thank you.